The Street Luge event brought together the best pilots from around the world, all competing for medals, cash, and the prestigious title of World Extreme Games Champion. The dual competition was some of the closest racing seen in years. Let's check out highlights from the dual Street Luge heats. Well, our, our problem right now is everybody's within a half a second, and the wind is 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 even a difference. It's right now we could roll the dice in the parking lot right now and have a better have a better answer to who wins this thing. So it's cool. It's it's what it is. It's street luge, man. We're having fun on this course. This course is getting great. The road's starting to cool down now, so we might be fighting Mother Nature here pretty soon. It might change the whole aspect of the race. There's not one moment we weren't almost touching each other. We were, we were, we were just like this, going all over each other. Oh, it was amazing. I was, I was banging hay bales on both sides of the course <laughs> all the way down. What is it about, you know, you're racing and you think it's going to get you through today? <laughs> I started this damn sport. <laughs> <laughs> That was a great ride. Oh. It's very uh, straight and fast. Oh man, it's great. Everybody's good, man. These guys have gotten so much better. You should see this guy push off over here, man. Oh man, he's gonna scare us off the line. Track feels good. Track, track, track felt good yesterday. It feels good today. Everybody's uh, kicking some butt on this mountain. The adrenaline's high right now. A lot of nerves. Everybody here is in the top 50 in the world. Um, you cannot really get a higher class event than this. That was a beautiful race, man. That was awesome. Yeah! <laughs> and I love being in Australia, man. This place is great. In this edition, our main feature is on the Dual Street Luge Finals, held on the southern Melbourne coastline at Arthur's Seat. One of the fastest sports at the World Extreme Games is street luge. The key to a fast time down the course is the cornering. Choosing the right angle into a corner will make you roll rather than slide around it. And this will help competitors to get a fast exit speed. Smooth lines and aerodynamic positions will get you down the course quickly. Sitting behind other riders and getting a slipstream is one of the best ways to pick up speed and pass. The only way to stop a loose in motion is to use foot brakes. Loose pilots add rubber to their shoes to get extra stopping power. And at 80 kilometers an hour, you need all the stopping power you can get. Bob Pereira, Sean Mallard, two Americans coming at you. All right, here we go. They're paddling off into the start of this first race. Bob Pereira, an absolute legend in the world of street luge. And he's getting off to a great start here. Sean was going right behind him for the little drafting maneuver. Yeah, Sean's going to have to catch up. He's really going to have to stick his toes right on the helmet of Bob Pereira if he's going to have any chance of slipstreaming by in any of these turns. Bob's way too smart for that. This guy has basically stated that he is one of the founders, if not the guy that started this whole thing. Exactly. It's a bit of 
A little bit of controversy out there in the street loose world over exactly who did found this sport and uh, take it to where it is today. But I'll tell you right now, this is where we're at. And Bob Pereira, all those years of practice and experience are taking him through this turn. And I tell you what, he's going to be very tough for Sean the Duck Muller to beat him from here. Both clean, good braking with the feet. Just uh, smooth sailing all the way so far. Exactly. A pretty easy race for Bob Pereira. Sean is not really getting that close to him. Bob's going to know exactly where he is, just putting the one foot brake in there. Now he's getting into the hairpin turn. This is where it gets tough. This is where the good races are going to come through without a scratch. And you can see there both those races coming through, but Bob Pereira still in the lead. Yeah, it's no style here. It's pure speed, pure adrenaline. And whoever makes the finish line for it. Bob Pereira flying into the semifinals. Here we go with the replay. Yeah, and it looks like Pereira, just a nice clean line, great braking. It's nice and smooth, man, just like the pro that he is. Mallard coming up on the turn, almost went in the hay bales, losing a lot of speed, skidding out there, and uh, couldn't quite catch up from there on out. Yeah, yeah, we got big Tom Mason from the United States, Peter Elliott from England. We're gonna have to do a lot of work here in the start. Yeah, you know what, the start is a lot to do with these uh, street loose races. Sometimes they have the pole sticking out of the ground. They can really get a big push. Today they've got to go with the knuckle and then into the palm paddle. And they're very close going into the start, but it is Peter Elliott who is slightly behind Tom Mason. Tom Mason's a big guy. He's going to be tough to catch up from here. Yeah, it's got to be a huge difference guy carrying that much weight down that hill. Exactly. That's pretty much what carries them down here. These guys can't do any accelerating. The only thing that gets them going faster is their weight, and then they can break into the turns. If they can hold off on their braking, then they're going to have a little more speed going into the finish. I mean, it's all physics, Paul. I mean, maybe that energy, energy drink helps out, but I mean, seriously. Exactly. It is a lot to do with physics. You know what? But there's also the setup of their boards. Very technical. You see these guys in the pits really working it. And Some right here, breaking. under brakes. And the line they take through the course, if they can pick a good line, that's going to set them up for the finish. Well, there's not much Elliot can do. He's just going to stare at the back of that helmet. And wishing he had some kind of grappling hook so he can just launch it over there and get Mason in the helmet and pull him back. Yeah, Mason's a seasoned veteran of street luge, and this is where you're going to see him really put his skills to work. Coming through the hairpin, taking a great line there. You see Peter Elliott almost hitting those hay bales, taking, you know, somewhat of a bad line through. It's going to make it even harder for him to catch Tom if he's doing that. Yeah, there's nothing he can do now. This race is over. Exactly. They're coming through the finish. Tom Mason with a fairly easy win, cruising over the finish line. In the replay, we see the sweet, smooth style that Tom Mason has to go through to the semifinals. Yes, and he is going to be taking on the big man, Bob Pereira. George Orton from the US of A, Nick Duffield from his home ground of Australia here. That's right, he comes from a little bit west in Adelaide, and you know what, it's tough for these Australian guys. They haven't been doing the street luge as long as the Americans, but if you check out the start here, Nick Duffield getting a great start on the veteran George Orton, but you know what, George Orton is a very, very smart racer. He's going to be tough to beat no matter where the start ends up. Yeah, most definitely. I kind of dig the uh, all black suit, no logos thing. That's pretty cool. Well, you know what? It's tough for these Australian guys to get their sponsorship. I mean, it's a new sport out here, and they haven't been doing that long. But with events like the Summer Extreme Games, these guys are definitely going to rise to popularity. Yeah, and Duffield says he likes to do this to give his adrenal glands a workout. Well, you know what? He's definitely going to get a workout today racing against George Jordan. Look at that. George Jordan already got him. He slipstream through. He's coming around the left hand here, comes up under brakes. You know what? These guys are absolutely flying down Arthur Seat Mountain. It's close. Here. It is a close one. Nick Duffield oh. definitely putting up a good show coming through on the inside. Oh, here we go with the hustle and hey bustle. Hey, guys, get a room. <laughs> exactly. You know what? Rubbing is racing, and that's what's going on here. Nothing illegal happening there. These guys are going to come out of this being happy. This is the hairpin. George Orton sliding race. through. It is a very tight race. I tell you what, one of the more exciting ones I've seen today. Yeah, I mean, it's just bumping and grinding, but it's just part of the racing. These guys are friends. They know it. They respect each other. That's just the way it is. Well, the fight to the finish. Exactly. George Orton is an absolute master of the hustle and bustle. George pulls oh. it off. As you can see in the replay, in the last turn, Paul, it's just a matter of which line you're going to take. Exactly. You see George coming in here, taking the inside line, and that was the difference between first and second. It's all about the line. Here we go. Quarterfinals of... Street losers, we got Jeremy Gilder from the UK, if you couldn't tell, and Andre Weber from Australia. 
you know, little high five. What's up? Good yeah. luck, brother. A lot of camaraderie between these two guys. They're both fairly new to the street loose scene. You know, this is going to be a great race. Andre Weber actually designs a lot of the boards that you see the Australian guys riding on. So he definitely knows a lot about Australian street losing. And look at the paddle right out of the gate. Andre Weber in the lead. And Jeremy Gilder trying to catch him with a couple of extra paddles there. We'll see how this one turns out. Yeah, talking about boards and butts. I remember sitting on my skateboard, probably just going down there and just shredding the heels of my shoes. My mom getting upset at me. Oh, yeah, way back in the 80s we'd hit the parking lots around Melbourne all over Australia just flying around there on the skateboards these guys though have taken it to the next level they've changed the wheels the bearings the boards everything and they're stepping it up flying up to about 60 70 kilometers an hour down this mountain yeah it's about 40 45 miles per hour and it's just nuts I mean they're only about an inch off the ground great turn we got going here Yep, oh, here we go. Oh, you know, he's taking the outside line. And the difference between these two guys, it's really going to end up in line. You've got to pick that line coming into the turn and come out of it. You can't accelerate out of these turns. you just got to hope that you pick the right line. And here's the tough corner coming up. There's that heel wearing out that you were talking about, Brett, oh, coming yeah. around the hairpin. Oh, losing some speed. Oh, two wheels. That's it. That's right. That is going to be it for Jeremy Gilder. The hands go up on the head. He knows he can't catch Andre Weber from here. And we've got an Australian now coming through to the semifinals. Great to see Andre Weber doing well. Look at that. Just firing down like a rocket to the finish line. Jeremy took a little tile to come home there. And Andre coming through the easy win. And this is where he won it right here on the line. Look at the way he took that. Yeah, it's the last turn right here. And this is where it was all laid out right here. This is it. Done. I'm sorry. Hey, game over. Insert quarter.